Please, could I ask you to take your seats? Mr. Namba Yao, Chair of the Council of Administration. Mr. Jean-Paul Forceville, Chair of the Postal Operations Council. Director General Matoki, Deputy Director General Oswald. Mr. Hussein, Mr. Cleaver, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Dadge, and I am the Communications Manager here at the Universal Postal Union. Today is a very special day. We are here to witness the transfer of powers to our incoming UPU leadership in the presence of Mr. Bishar A. Hussein and Mr. Pascal Cleaver, who have presided over this union as Director General and Deputy Director General for the past nine years. They, along with our Council of Administration Chair from Côte d'Ivoire, Mr Isaac Namba Yao, will welcome the UPU's newly elected Director General, Mr Masahiko Motoki, and Deputy Director General, Mr Marion Oswald. To begin the official ceremony and to provide an official welcome, I would now like to invite the Council of Administration Chair to the lectern. Sir, you have the floor. Mesdames et Messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, you are all aware of the protocol. It's with great emotion that I am here before you today to chair this handover ceremony with the outgoing Director General the new elected Director General and the Deputy Director General, outgoing Director General and the new ele newly elected Deputy Director General at, uh, elected in Abidjan, which uh, Ivory Coast. So I would warmly like to welcome each and every one of you for your words of welcome and congratulations when I was designated to chair the Council of Administration of the UPU. I n felt the warmth with which you expressed your congratulations, um, which reflects the friendship between our countries for over a decade now. I would like to first address the uh, new Director General of the UPU. My dear Masahiko Mitoki, I would like to congratulate you for your brilliant election to lead our organization in August of last year in Abidjan. The first um, election held in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire, elected you with the maximum number of votes cast. Mr. Masahiko Metoki, this is a testament to your long career um, in uh, public service and in the postal sector. And this uh, shows that you know very well the UPU. You uh, chaired the CA up until uh, from 2012 onwards and chaired the second Congress, the this Postal Financial Services of the POC, and you led the first revision of the Universal Postal Convention, which uh, allowed for the post to 
um, send lithium batteries and uh, other equipment uh, containing batteries. All the member states have witnessed your commitment to continue reforming the postal industry and to rise to the challenges that it faces with the inclusion and participation of all member countries. And you intend to lead a committed team in order to solve the union's problems and to provide support to, to each country according to their needs. I encourage you and I hope I can ha count on everyone's commitment to enable our organization to rise to the highest uh, levels within the United Nations. You, um, Bishar Hussein, are handing over your position now in this nice atmosphere to our new Director General. I would like to congratulate you for all the work you have done for our organization these past years. You have initiated many reforms and have promoted gender equality within the Council, but also among states to give a equal chances to developing countries which didn't have as much of a say in decision-making before you. So I am convinced that even after you have left, that you will remain committed to the protagonists within our sector, contributing your expertise to the new postal sector. Now, turning to Marianne Oswald, our a new Deputy Director General, I know that you support public infrastructures because you know that they can be managed more efficiently. You have important responsibilities in the operations and strategies of the postal operators uh, uh, sector um, and have demonstrated your expertise these past 24 years. You will contribute to the best of yourselves under the leadership of Mr. Uh, Metoki. And I would also like to say a couple of words about Pascal Clivan. Mr. Deputy Director General, even if you didn't succeed, it's worse not to have n tried. You fought a noble battle, and I am convinced that you will succeed at something even greater. I wish you all the best, and I know I can count on all of you as the chair of the Council of Administration to enable our organization to flourish. And I would like to wish you all the best and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Namba Yao. Could I please invite the former UPU Deputy Director General, Mr. Pascal Cleaver, to the lectern to make his official handover remarks? Monsieur a Chair of the Council of Administration, dear friend, Chair of the Postal uh, Operations Council, and dear friend, likewise, Mr. Metoki, Mr. Oswald, former Deputy Director General, and former Director General. Bishar Hussain, dear friends, dear hosts, I wish you all a happy new year. I would like to warmly welcome the interpreters who are giving me a chance to speak in another official language of the UPU in French, which is a language I've always defended as it represents diversity 
uh, and uh, represents the uh, our very rich cultural uh, diversity. And I am very glad that we have managed uh, to come to an agreement and sign an agreement with the um, Association of French-speaking countries in 2016 in uh, Madagascar. And so I am delighted to be able, able to um, make this statement because now things will continue with uh, other protagonists and it is time to hand over my position here at the UPU. After 16 years at the service of the UPU in the UN, in my long career within the postal sector, it has been a pleasure to work for this honorable public service, which is an intermediary in our new modern um, modes of consumption. I was one of the first and youngest deputy director general of this organization. It has been a wonderful stage in my life. With the new directive on post, the treaties of the UPU, I was very fulfilled as a, a lawyer to have helped in the reform, financial reform of the UPU to uh, comply with IPSAS uh, standards and to have implemented uh, other plans and strategies. I have used my competencies to serve the UPU and to bring about reforms which, uh, as the president of the regional bank of, um, and in my other capacities, I will continue to always fight against the status quo. As a director of strategy and deputy director general, I emphasize the importance of developing a longer term vision, which is the only way we can guarantee our uh, sustainability. Nowadays, nothing is standard or normal anymore. One must adapt. Even if we don't have a compass, we need to make decisions. Sometimes at the UPU we discuss um, matters for uh, long hours in working groups, but the postal players are in space. Amazon and other logistics giants know how to exploit uh, the slow decision maker of the players that look on what is going on astounded. We now must act. Let's hope that the UPU will know which direction to follow in order to show its relevance and its uh, raison d'etre in the coming years. And I really hope this from the bottom of my heart. This handover ceremony is a very special moment that is also an opportunity to, for us to think about um, different positions, uh, one of which I have, um, I, I didn't, I wasn't elected for the director general, but also the powers of the deputy uh, uh, director general who has the ability to convince the director general of certain things because it's only by persuasion that we can manage to change things. And that role now falls upon my new um, Deputy Director General and friend, uh, Mr. Oswald. The, the UPU, the powers, and we know this, is in the hands of the Director General. It is now uh, Mr. Metoki who will have that responsibility. And once again, my congratulations. This is not an easy task. You need to find the right balance between confrontation and um, consent. I have no doubt about your abilities to overcome the difficulties and move through the various traps that you will face. Now, in this Olympic year, you will have to deal with many different uh, issues, including the premises, including 
four different diplomatic missions and other, which uh, shows the international multilateral uh, um, vocation of uh, this beautiful city, which is Bern. We need coordinated, uh, well thought decisions. I'd like to thank the canton and the city of Bern in passing. These past nine years, the main risks uh, uh, identified have been uh, mitigated. One of the main ones in relation to the organization's financing, its sustainability and its economic uh, model. As a director of finance and strategy from 2005 to 2013, the UPU took a very courageous decision. It changed its accounting standards and has taken on responsibilities led by Edouard Dayan, whom I'd like to uh, welcome this morning. We decided to put an end to a philosophy that passed on the responsibility to future leaders to deal with the problems of the part. This required a lot of um, determination. Our convictions were aligned and they still are in this regard. It's with um, our Director General, uh, Mr. Hussein, that we dealt with the excess liabilities and other expenses that quickly increased. We showed a clear will to stick to zero nominal growth. Various sources of financing were uh, also considered. In the past couple of years, we have um, managed to acquire 50 um, million additional in revenue, and we had at heart the economic well-being of the UPU. We are, were aware of the fact that we needed to manage our um, economic situation here at the EUPU. We did so uh, with uh, the reform of the uh, pensions fund, uh, decisions that we took unanimously. So now I would like to encourage those uh, who are taking over to continue this work. It's a matter of economic uh, uh, justice. Now with regard to economic and financial sustainability, it seems like the risks uh, have been somewhat mitigated, but ha we are not um, totally um, protected. The financial well-being of the UPU will require greater financing from users as our products and services contribute to added value of their business. So we need a better a distribution of the costs which are imbalanced at present and it took a pandemic to realize certain things. One thing is unchanged. Despite the circumstances and the financial difficulties we face that have um, forced us to uh, be very conservative in these matters, our policies, our um, approach has enabled us to change the balance for the developing countries who are now play a greater role in the debate. I'm thinking about the children in Mali, in Niger, in Burkina Faso. I am proud at 53 years of age to have managed to achieve certain things that I always wanted to do for our brothers that are part of the United Nations systems but are at a disadvantage. And that was part of my commitments. and was carried out in practice. Our roadmap was clear. Once we had found the risks, we had to find the way to do things in practice. We have had uh, tools uh, like precise indicators and 
a team of leaders, uh, committed leaders, and it is thanks to this that we have um, managed. So I would like to thank our directors that led uh, the process, uh, showed uh, their talent and their resilient spirit despite the circumstances, despite the unexpected events. We have managed to um, new uh, digitize um, our systems, uh, move to an, um, paperless uh, systems. We have managed to hold all our events, even the Congress, despite the pandemic. Most uh, decisions uh, have been taken. We have even managed to elect our new leaders. And thank you to Ivory Coast Côte d'Ivoire for this. In March, since March 2020, our staff has been working from home. I would like to thank them, especially for those listening to us. And. I believe that the new leaders will have to think about a new policy with regards to telework. It is the staff I would like us to also pay tribute to these men and women who have made things possible. We were able to count on their knowledge, on their expertise which was essential for us to carry out everything we have uh, up until now. We, our staff is very diverse geographically, uh, but also in terms of gender. Our staff is our life. It is our daily uh, realities. And I would also like us to spare a thought for those who left us during their uh, service. They will always be in our minds throughout this these times of crisis, of changes that uh, force us to organize the four congresses, two um, extraordinary ones. Throughout all these difficulties, our ties, have, our bonds have been strengthened. We found solutions, and that reflects our sector. Postmasters are very special people in this world, as if a family. The world of the posts is a world of solidarity in which people try to find the best solutions. And as I'm talking about family, I'd like to now turn to my family, my wife and my son, my sole motivation. I would like to tell you that this isn't the end of the road. The battle goes on. There are more tasks to take on. Mr. Matoki, Mr. Oswald, to all those who are looking at and watching us through their screens, I wish you a very good year, a very interesting one, in good health and full of achievements. I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Cleaver. I would now invite incoming Deputy Director General Mr. Marion Oswald to make his remarks. But before you do, perhaps we could just have a photograph together with the outgoing DDG as well, please. Perhaps preferably by the flag. With pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Masahiko Metoki, Director General of the UPU, 
Metokisan, Sher Isaac Nambayao, Chair of the Council of Administration, Mr. Hussein, Mr. Kliva, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to be here today as I begin my work as the Deputy Director General of the Universal Postal Union. My warm congratulations to Mr. Hussein for his leadership of this organization and also to Mr. Clevas, my predecessor. Thank you, Ambassador Hussein. Thank you, Pascal. I must admit that as I stand here today before you, I feel not only deep respect, but also a huge responsibility. When presenting my vision as a candidate of Republic of Slovenia, I always emphasized not just accountability, but also transparency and business ethics. I believe in the importance of this principle as the drivers of any successful sector. Today, my first step in achieving this goal is to take the UPU oath in front of you all. I solemnly swear to exercise in all loyalty, discretion and conscience the function entrusted to me as an international civil servant of the Universal Postal Union, to discard this function and to regulate my conduct with the interest of the Union only in view and not to seek or accept instructions in regard to the performance of my duties from any government or other authority external to the Union. I also solemnly swear and declare and promise to respect the obligations incumbent upon me as set out in the staff regulations and rules. The role of postal operators and postal services in society is changing. The developed world was fortunate enough to move through evolution and liberalization from traditional letter and parcel delivery companies to logistics and ICT companies. Less developed countries have not been that lucky. They have moved from few or almost no letters in the past to the widespread use of smartphones today. However, what all countries have in common is that the status of the postal services and the post as an institution in the society largely depends on the owner, mostly the state. During my terms of office, I therefore encourage responsible owners to define the role of the post in their environment and to support its development. The Universal Postal Union will thus guide, coordinate and help members to enhance the quality and importance of postal services. Our task is to connect our customers, private or business. Let's not forget that the infrastructure we have is the best in the world. Your Excellencies, postal services are part of the communication market where letter post items seem to be increasingly losing their relevance. Emails dominate modern communication and may soon turn letters into an insignificant communication tool, a boutique romantic accessory. And while the new technologies substitute the traditional mail, they generate new parcel volumes through e-commerce, forcing the designated national operators to transform their traditional business models into sustainable commercial businesses that not only use their own resources economically, but also strive to reduce any negative environmental or social impacts in their countries and around the world. Solidarity has been an important connecting factor in our network in the past. What is the essence of solidarity? That those who have more give to those who have less. Very simple. Without it, those who are deprived cannot progress and the gap between the developed and the underdeveloped world only increases. So, it should be our mission to find a model of solidarity that will reduce the differences among us or between us. Every intergovernmental organization sooner or later needs to face the fact that the world around is changing faster than it wants it to. This is especially true for Universal Postal Union. We are all aware of this and we know that we will need to change and adapt if we want to survive and succeed in a digital society 
that is not only coming, but is already here. Ladies and gentlemen, I first entered this building in 1997, exactly 25 years ago. I can still remember how impressed I was by it. It looked so majestic. I felt deep respect and I, this feeling has not changed to this very day. Therefore, to the all UPU staff, chairs of the POC, CA, the committees and task forces, the restricted unions, and above all, the member countries, I promise you that I will work with all of you in the very best interest of this union. Thank you to my wife, Tadea, my former boss, Tomasz, and thank you all. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Director General Oswald. Could I please call our outgoing Director General, Mr. Hussein, to the stage to give his remarks. But after speaking, please could I ask you to remain standing, sir, because we're going to pass the key from one Director General to another. Sir, the floor is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Your Excellency, the Director General of the Universal Postal Union, Mr. Mitoki, the Deputy Director General of the International Bureau of the Universal Postal Union, Mr. Marianne, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors and Heads of Missions present here with us today. Your Excellency, the Chairman of the CA, Brother Isaac, uh, the Chairman of the Postal Operations Council, Mr. Fosfield, distinguished invited dignitaries, international bureau staff, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all of you. I would like to express my profound thanks to all of you for honoring us with your presence to witness this handing over ceremony today. The handover is a long established tradition of UPU that signifies the transition and formal change of God at the apex of this, of the, uh, this union's leadership. Let me once again congratulate my friend, Mr. Masahiko and Mr. Marianne for their elections to the leadership of the UPU. I also wish to call upon member countries and international bureau staff to support the two leaders to enable them to continue with their momentous task of transforming this organization to address the demands and the dynamics of the ever-changing postal market. Pascal and I have done our part and it's now up to the new team to bring new ideas, new energy, and enthusiasm to, the, to continue the journey. To my successor, as you will soon realize, UPU from outside is quite different from what it is from inside. The good news is that you have very able and competent and professional staff who will make all things easy for you. Please support them to continue delivering for you. One thing you'll also realize from inside is the fact that the union needs to keep on reforming in many areas to cope with the dynamics of the global business. This is not always quite obvious from outside. To member countries, and the International Bureau Secretariat, please help these two gentlemen to achieve their aspirations to deliver on the promise they underlined in their respective campaign manifestos. Excellencies, 
Today is not a day for me to give long speeches about our achievements, our trials and tribulations, our challenges, and our successes. It's all written in the history books of the UPU. It is engraved in stone, and a number of them have already been touched by my colleague, Mr. Pascal. But suffice to say that uh, this journey was not easy when we talk, when you took office in 2012, 2013, sorry. And we have come through nine years of remarkable challenges and experience, which we'll always carry home. This very hall has seen many debates. We have seen great ideas come out of this hall. And I'm very proud to say that myself and my leadership and uh, my colleague, we were able to deliver 100% on all the KPAs that was set for us by the member countries during our two mandates. And that was not a mean achievement. Your Excellencies, during that period, from 2013 up to now, we've held two successful Congresses. In 2016, we had a Congress in, in Istanbul under very difficult circumstances. The country was going through a, a political challenge at the time. But we stood up together and delivered a remarkable Congress that, in our recent memory. And then, uh, of course, we had 2018 Extraordinary Congress, the second Extraordinary Congress in Addis Ababa. But before long, this, can, this union experienced a very dramatic challenge when one of our member countries, United States of America, threatened to quit the union for a problem that had existed for generations, dealing with remuneration and the compensation package. We were forced to go to another ex extraordinary Congress in 2019 in Geneva. And again, when the union went almost to the brink of collapse, the International Bureau Secretariat got together and delivered one of uh, the most remarkable, uh, what do you call, consensus in my diplomatic career. And that is the victory option in Geneva in 2019. That held the union together and that uh, kept the United States in the country. But not only that, but gave us 40 million Swiss francs, which was just talked about by, by our colleague here in the process, to solve our pension fund problems and also to really first change the system of compensation that we have today. So, Excellencies, uh, I cannot count the, the, the successes that we have done here together. But one thing I want to say is the Congress of 2020 was postponed because of the pandemic that we all came through. And this is when the, we were tested and tried. This union could not hold a Congress in 2020 as initially planned. Not for any fault of us, international Secretariat, neither the host country. But we got together and found a solution for that. And in 2021, Cote d'Ivoire hosted for us one of the most remarkable Congress, again, in UPS history. In the worst pandemic situation, the first hybrid Congress was held and the first in the UN common system. And for that, I want to really express my profound thanks to the government and the people of the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire, and also to you, Mr. Chairman, I will ask you to convey our thanks and appreciation to His Excellency the President and to the government for that Congress, which has now delivered our next leadership here. Your Excellency, uh, Of course, before I conclude my remarks, 
I want to acknowledge my country, Kenya. Your Excellency, the representative of the ambassador, please convey my warmest regards to our president and the people of Kenya, who have stood with me and gave me the wings to fly. You gave me the ability to be able to lead these organizations and to stand with me throughout the two mandates. And for that, I'm very grateful. And please convey the same message to the people and the government of the Republic of Kenya. Of course, I have expressed my thanks to Cote d'Ivoire and Mr. Isaac uh, for organizing that excellent Congress for us. I want to thank the International Bureau Secretariat, my colleagues, each one individual as well as collectively. I'll always remember you with the fondest of memory. We have gone, we have been tried and tested by member countries. Four Congresses in one cycle is not an easy exercise under most difficult conditions. But every time we were vindicated, we stood together and we delivered on everything the member countries have asked us to do. That took time. I know many of you do not even go for your holidays. And for that, I want to say that you am forever grateful for the achievements that we have done together, the support you gave us. I want to thank my colleague, Mr. Pascal, for his remarkable courage and leadership. Mr. Pascal, we came and we delivered. We knew it was never easy, but we delivered on all the promises we made and achieved the objectives we set for ourselves. You'll always have my respect and I'll always remember the times we spent together planning, executing, drawing our strategies, trying to solve the problems for this union. Ms. Pascal has many talents, I can tell you. The finest fundu I've ever eaten was prepared by this guy. <laughs> and we used to go to his uh, chalet or house up in the mountains and whenever we had difficult things to think about here. And after a delicious fundu, I can tell you all the great ideas start flowing. <laughs> and for that, uh, Mr. Pascal, I've seen your many talents. You are a great guy and I will always remember your loyalty, your friendship, and your support, and your courage, determination, I can call all the adjectives. Thank you very much, and thank you very much again. Excellencies, there's one man I have a lot of respect for, and that is uh, not a man from the International Bureau Secretariat. He's our external auditor from the Swiss Federal Audit, Mr. Didi Mono. I can see he's seated there. Mr. Didi Mono, let me tell you guys, is from the Swiss Federal Office that really looks at this union as external audit. In the last nine years, we conducted 112 internal and external audit exercises we facilitated. And the Swiss Federal Office is the organization that comes and checks and sees what we have done. And with the advice, they have guided us, they've supported us. They've told us where we went wrong and corrected us where we have uh, uh, done a great job. What I can remember is we inherited thousands of uh, open audit queries when we, when we came in first. And we kept closing them down. But the, the nature of audit is that you close 100 but you open another fort every time they come to visit. But what touched me about this great uh, audit exercise is that um, after all those 112 exercises, I can tell you, we had zero qualifications on any major weaknesses that has been reported. And during the last session of this S0 session, Mr. Mono was here in the hall and he presented his final, the most impartial, the most uh, professional advice and observation he has made. And he had 
very, very good things to say about the performance of the union and our mandate, me and DDG. But also he had very kind words to say about me and Mr. Pascal. Mr. Mono, I was not in the hall that day, but I have the opportunity to say thank you very much for your good support you have given us and for your objective assessment of this organization. And I am forever grateful today. I'm very glad that we were able to live up to the expectations of the member countries and their trust and the respect they gave us. We were able to withhold that trust and deliver with dignity and respect. Thank you very much, Mr. Mano, for your support. Please give him a, a big clap. Excellencies, I want to thank my family. My wife is seated here, Asha. This lady, we met when I just finished the University of Nairobi in 1984, shortly after, just when I started my career in the Postal Service. And she went the, she walked with me through the entire career of my life from the lowest level of management of the Kenya Post. Today, when I am sitting on the slopes of the Alps mountain at the pinnacle of my career, she's here in this town, in this country. She doesn't know anybody in this town. She has no friends here. But she has been faithfully sitting here and she bore all the pressures that I was carrying and the burden. And when I think that I was at my lowest, she'll always give me the courage and the support that I needed. And she told me that I am not a quitter. I should be able to stand up. She gave me that support for which I will not be able to quantify and I will not be able to uh, um, cannot be able to repay back, let me say. So, to Asha and to my family members who stood with me, I say thank you very much, and thank you very much to you all. <clears throat> Excellencies, I'll always remember my departed parents, my father and mother. These are two great people, and every time I talk about them, tears well in my eyes. They taught me good manners, they raised me, and of course, they trained me to be honest, upright, and, to, and molded me into the man I am. They're not here with me today, but they're forever in my prayers and in my thoughts. And I wish they were seated here today. They'll be very proud of me. But since they're not there, they will always be in my heart, and I will remember them. I come from one of the most remotest places on this planet, northern Kenya, remote village, where there are no schools, no things we take for granted here. They made sure that I got the necessary education, not textbook education, the things I needed for life to be the person I am. They told me to speak the truth. And told, and told me never, never to accept any situation where I will be able to suspend my better judgment because of someone else's opinion. They told me to respect people, but they also taught me how to be respected. I hope I have lived up to the expectations but we're all fallible, we are human beings. If I have failed them in any way, I'll seek forgiveness from my friends. Whatever I did here in the ninth, last nine years, we have tough times, we had hard times, have pushed member countries very, very hard sometimes to change the reforms. 
but I said it has never been personal. It was professional and I was always backed by the professional and technical and legal advice of the competent men and women who are here with me. So, but uh, change is never easy. We have had our challenges. But again, we had only one common objectives. We had the best interests of this union at heart. And I hope that every one of you will consider our shortfalls, if there were any, in that context, and not, nothing personal from me. And as I leave the stage today, I want to forgive everybody, and I expect or I request forgiveness from everyone for anything that uh, we may have said or done in the course of our duty that may not have pleased you. With those few remarks, excellent ladies and gentlemen, it has been a great honor to lead this union, and now that I'm stepping down, I want to wish my colleague, Mr. Mitoki and Mr. Marianne, the very best. Please stay firm to the true ideals of the founding members of this union to keep this union and to keep the fire burning. Because there's no other organization that serves this union better than the Universal Postal Union. In times of war, in times of peace, in times of tsunamis, earthquakes, tornadoes, fires, pandemics, name them. We are the first respondents that are there on the ground that goes to serve humanity. And that is the, that is the privilege that we have. So to all the men and the women who risk their lives for the sake of humanity, the postmen and women, I salute them all. And I say it is goodbye from me at this stage. And I wish to see you in future in a different capacity. Thank you very much for your audience. Thank you very much, Mr. Hussein. Director General Matoki, could I please invite you to join Mr. Hussein at the centre of the stage here, in front of the flags, to receive the key. Please, could I kindly ask you to hold the key and to look directly at the camera? So perhaps just to pass the key over, and maybe you could both hold the key. Just before, before we do that, uh, let me just say one word here. Um, Your Excellency, uh, this is the symbolic key of, uh, of uh, power and authority over this building. This was handed to me by my uh, predecessor, Mr. Edward Dayan. And uh, it's a long tradition that uh, we hand it down to the next leadership. So today I have the privilege and the honor to be able to pass the instruments of power to my colleague and friend, dear friend, Mr. Mitoki. So Mr. Mitoki, please, uh, you can take off for me. Ambassador Michel Sain, Mr. Pascal Kribus, Mr. Isaac Gamba Yao, Chair of the Council of Administration, Mr. Jean Paul Hosseville, Chair of the Postal Operation Council, Mr. Marian Oswald, Deputy Director General of the UPU, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Colleagues. A very happy new year to you all. I am proud to receive this key and to become the 17th Director General of the Universal Postal Union. The key I'm holding is a symbol 
of this organization's rich history and its enduring ability. Over nearly 150 years to prosper and adapt. It is also an honor to receive the key from Ambassador Hussein, who over the last nine years has read this organization with distinction. My warm gratitude to Mr. Freeber. Together, you both have worked tirelessly on behalf of this organization, and in doing so, you have shown vision, leadership, and commitment. On behalf of everyone present today, I thank you both for your outstanding achievement. I would also like to thank the ambassadors or permanent representatives of member countries present today. Thank you for your trust you have placed in me. I shall never forget my duty to you all. Around me also thank the government of the Swiss Confederation the UPS host country, the local authorities, and the mayor of Bern for the daily support and assistance provided to the UPU. Throughout my time, I will do everything possible to strengthen the ties that bind us closely together. In addition, my thanks to the government of Japan for their faith in me and their support. Excellencies and distinguished guests, I'm taking my UP oath in front of you and before the wider UPU community who are watching this ceremony in the UPU TV. I do so with great pride and because I wish to make an important public commitment to the duties and responsibilities of my office. Therefore, I solemnly swear to exercise in all loyalty, discretion, and conscience the functions entrusted to me as an international civil servant of the Universal Postal Union to discharge these functions and regulate my conduct with interest to the union only in view and not to seek or accept instructions in regard to the performance of my duties from any government or other authorities external to the Union. I also solemnly declare and promise to respect the obligation in Cuba upon me as I set out the staff regulations and the rules. Now I have taken my oath. I want to reaffirm my commitment to using the Director General's Office to oversee the successful implementation of the Abidjan Postal Strategy from 2022-2025. The strategy arose from an extensive consultation process and our combined desire to create a roadmap for the organization until 2025. It set out a vision of the post as an essential engine for sustainable development and invites the government to do everything possible to reduce the gaps in postal development around the world. 
Together with the need to harmonize postal regulatory frameworks, these activities from the crucial center of our work over the next business cycle. As Director General, I pledge that I will work in all sincerity with member countries to make this strategy successful. I also work closely with my Deputy Director General, Marian Oswald. He comes to his new position with a wealth of experience in postal business. As well as, we will also strongly benefit from the support of the UPU directors and the UPU staff who are behind our organizations. We were also working in partnership with Chair of Council of Administration, represented by Mr. Isaac Gambayao, and the Postal Operation Council, represented by Mr. Jean Paul Hosseville. I've also <coughs> formed strong working relations with the committees, including the Consultative Committee as well as the task forces. That we all play such an important role in achieving the Abidjan strategy. As able, the restricted unions are an integral part of the UPU committee. And I will continue to work closely with their leaderships to build partnerships and further develop cooperation. Without the input and the support of the restricted unions and the work undertaken in the regions, we have no hope to achieve the Abidjan strategy. I will also work with our many international partners including across the programs and organizations of the United Nations. It is essential the world achieves the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, and I believe the UPU and the international postal sector have significant roles to play in their achievement. Excellencies and distinguished guests, Although symbol, this key has tremendous significance. If we work in an effective and efficient manner, we can correctively unlock success for the entire postal industry. This is why I took this position, and this is why, together with you, I believe we can use the platform of success created by our successive predecessors to create bright future for the UPU and the postal sector. Finally, I would like to express my sincere gratitude again for your participation in the ceremony. Despite the very difficult current situation caused by COVID-19, I also apologize to you for the sudden cancellation of the reception today. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Director General Motoki, and many congratulations to both yourself and Deputy Director General Oswald. Our thanks also to Mr. Hussein and to Mr. Cleaver. Before we close our ceremony this morning, 
we have a very special interlude from some mu musicians who will play a selection of classical music. Please.
I'd like to invite everybody on the podium uh, to please step outside where we'll be having a, a number of photo opportunities. Could I also ask the chair of the POC to go as well, as well as the directors of the Universal Postal Union. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'd just like to say, um, just before I finish, uh, on a personal note, uh, I'd like to thank you very much for being willing to come. Uh, the weather was not very good today, so thank you for struggling through it. Certainly when I was up very early, it was snowing. I'd also like to say how nice it is to stand in front of a microphone and have an audience in front of me. It's been two years, I think. So a big thank you for coming today. Thank you very much for being such a good audience. And I wish you a safe journey back home. Thank you very much.